Hi, thanks for watching the video. I'm Todd Beginski. I'm a Microsoft MVP and partner and CTO at Canvas. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take the calendar screen that comes with Power Apps and enhance it by using components that will borrow from the Meeting Capture Power Apps sample template. This is going to allow you to create not just a calendar view very quickly of all the events on your or somebody else's calendar, but it's also going to show you how you can show all the details about those calendar events. Let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is create a brand new Power App. So this is a brand new tablet form factor Power App that I have here. And the first thing I'm going to do is go up to the new screen area and select that and then pick calendar. And this is going to add the new screen that has the calendar and shows me all the events based on the different days that I select on inside of that calendar control. We're going to take this screen here and then we're going to enhance it so that it does more than what we get right out of the box here. So as we can see, we've already got the screen ready to go here. And if I hit play to start in preview mode and I select a calendar, that's my main work calendar I just selected right there. So I'm going to see all the events for that load in just a second. So here we can see all the different uh, items here on my calendar today. And you'll notice they're just here in a list. And as we go from day to day, we can see that different items are here and we're able to see metadata about them, but if we click on them, nothing happens. We can't see any more details besides the time, the date, how long they are, where is it at, and what is the title. So our objective here is to enhance this screen so that we can see the details of these calendar invites. And I'm going to show you how to do that very easily right now. Okay, so the next piece of the puzzle where we're going to go get that details functionality is in the Meeting Capture app. The Meeting Capture app is a Power App sample template you see right here. To use this app, log in to Power App's website and then click on the Create button and you'll see it at the top here. After you've done that, click Make This App underneath it and that's going to create you an instance of the Meeting Capture Power App. I'm going to pause it while that Power App loads now. This Power App requires four different connections, so you may have to sign in to them in order to open the Power App. Once you've done that, just click the Allow button. This will start loading the Power App inside of the editor. It'll get us to the point where we can start copying the code that we want to enhance the calendar screen capabilities. So here we have the Meeting Capture Power App up and running. And the reason I chose this template is because I remember when we developed it, we had the functionality that showed us the details of a list of events coming off the calendar. So for example, if I pick one of these meetings here inside of my calendar, like this one, and then I click Start Meeting, when I come to the next screen here, I can see that I have attendees for this meeting. I have all the details as they were entered inside of the Outlook meeting invite. And what my goal is here is to be able to go to my other Power App here. And when I select one of these items, I'd like that detailed view to appear down here at the bottom. So this is a common use case I see inside of Power Apps and one that combining what we have inside of Meeting Capture with this out-of-the-box calendar screen template. As you're about to see, it's very easy to develop this functionality and really hardly write any code. So let's dig in now and actually start moving the code from Meeting Capture over to here to give us that functionality. Okay, so now I've got the two Power Apps side by side, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to copy and paste the components that I want to reuse from Meeting Capture over into my new Power App that I'm creating. Now, the two sections that I'm most interested in are attendees right here and meeting details, because these tell me more about the meeting. All the other metadata that I've got up here, I've already got in this screen template, so I'm not going to use that. So to copy these over, I'm just going to select this group right here called Home Attendees. And I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut you can't see here, but I'm hitting Control-C now, and I just copied that. 
Now I come back over and I click on screen two in the destination place and hit control V on my keyboard. And now as you can see, it's copying that control in and I now have it. And so the next one that I'm going to do is I'm going to go get the, the home meeting details section here. Again, control C, select my screen on the right side, control V, and now I've pasted in both of those pieces here. And so here we can see they are, and they've got a bunch of red warnings on it, but now we're going to start to clean those up and very quickly add the code so that when we click on one of these, it populates the data that is rendered by these different controls. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to rearrange things a little bit on the screen. So I'm going to select this calendar events gallery right here, and I'm just going to shorten it up and pull it up to about this high. And then I'm gonna go get those meeting details here. I'm gonna move that down and I'm gonna get the attendees and I'm gonna move that down here too. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in this video making this pretty. It's more the concept and the reusability I'm showing you here that I'm more focused on. So all the edits that I'm about to make here, these can really be done in any order you like. I'm just gonna kinda go through them one at a time as I really just find them and show you how I go through this process to marry this app up. So let's start over here on meeting details. And if I mouse over the air, it says name isn't valid. The identifier isn't recognized. So most likely that means I'm missing some data here. And if I click on the error, I can come to the top and see it here. Selected meeting. That's what's invalid. This doesn't exist anywhere inside of this new Power App screen that I created. But having been one of the folks that created Meeting Capture, I happen to know that that selected meeting variable is set back inside of the Meeting Capture Power App. So I'm going to go back inside of the Meeting Capture Power App and show you where that's set. And we're going to grab that code and move it over to the new app we're working on. So heading back to the meeting capture app, I'm looking for that selected meeting variable. And so to find that, I'll go to the file menu and select variables. And then here in the list, here's selected meeting. So I can see where that's defined an app on start. And also in the welcome screen, when you select in the gallery called gallery meetings. So I can click on this statement right here. And so there's my selected meeting, and we can see that that's coming out of this gallery right here. So on this screen, whenever someone collects one of the, clicks one of these, it sets the selected meeting property there, and then they can use it. So now if I come back over here inside of this one where it can't find the selected meeting, uh, what I'm going to want to do then is I'm going to want to modify the code inside this gallery so when I select one of them it also sets the selected meeting variable. So that calendar events gallery is this guy right here. And I've done some inspection on this one and I happen to notice that if we look at the on select here it's false. So there's, that's not how you select it. It's actually this transparent rectangle here that's laid over the top of everything. This is actually selecting. And so I'm just going to get rid of this select title three, which is just that column there, and paste in that new value. So now that I have that done, I can come up and put this back into preview mode, and I can click in an area where that rectangle would be right here. And if I had a body for the meeting details, I would see it. So let me go find a meeting invite where I know there is a body to it. And let's see here. I am pretty sure that this one's got one. So I'm going to click on that and there you go. So now you can see that we have the body of that particular email uh, that contains that calendar invite there. And that is all set. So now we've already got the meeting detail area. If you want to learn more about the meeting detail area, here you can see the meeting body is simply the selected meeting dot body. And then the rest of this is just Chrome to make it look good. So now we're going to move over to the attendees piece over here. 
and take a look at the attendees and the different errors we're getting there. So one thing I, I can tell you about this one is that as you look through these different things, you can see we have this item dot job title and we have display name and what is in this attendee gallery. Well, if we go take a look at the items collection within it here, we can see that it is a collection named meeting attendees. So that's the collection we need to head back to the meeting capture app and look where meeting attendees is built up and then grab that code and pull it over to our new power app here. So let's go back and find where we build that meeting attendees collection now. You're not going to get any clues if you look under file variables or collections onto where it is built. So you just have to hunt or know the Power App a little bit to do so. Thankfully, I know this Power App intimately, and so I can find that and show you how I found it as well. So you'd expect that to be built up when you click Start Meeting here. But as you can see, Start Meeting actually navigates to the home pop-up screen. So if we go back in the editor and we find the home pop-up screen and we look in the on visible property right here, here we can see where the clear collect function is building up meeting attendees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all the code inside of here and I am going to copy it. I just use control C to copy that code and now I'm going to take it back over to the other power app. So here I have my other power app that I'm working on and I want this code to fire in that same on select. So I'm going to put in a semicolon there, go to a new line and paste in my new code. Notice right off the bat, I eliminated a whole bunch of those red X's down here, but I do have some that are still left over. Now this one is a little bit cryptic and hard to find out, but I happen to know where these things are so I can show you quickly. The first one is this my domain. This is a variable that is not recognized inside of this Power App, so I need to go find out where that's built in the other Power App, and then I can come back and replicate it again. So as we head back to meeting capture one more time, We'll go into variables and we'll look for my domain and here it is and we can see that that is set in the apps on start. So if I go over to the on start event for my app here, now I can find that particular value. So it doesn't seem to be refreshing properly. Let's try that again here. And go back to on start and then here we have it so here is the my domain variable as you can see this is used to determine if they're in the same org or not and we use this really to make sure that we display the user profile property appropriately so I'm going to highlight this code and copy it and then what I'm going to do is head back to the new power up I'm creating and I am going to put this value up here at the top. Now, I know that this value was in the on visible, I'm um, part of me, the on start, my other power up, and you'd probably put it there too, instead of on every click event, but just for the sake of making this demo quicker, I'm gonna put it here. I'm also gonna eliminate this comma because it's no longer being called as part of the concurrent function and replace that with a semicolon. So now we got rid of that and we can see my domain is showing up in the good color, but, the Office 365 Users Connector here is not color-coded appropriately. That just means I need to add that connection. So to do that, I'm going to pick View, go to Data Sources, and then inside of my data source that I'm going to add, I'm going to pick that Office 365 Users Connector. The Office 365 Users Connector is used to pull back the metadata about the people and their pictures inside of this attendees section. So now that I've got that back, notice I've also eliminated even more of those uh, um, red X's that indicate the errors. So now if I go to play and I click on 
an item here, we can see it's gathering meeting attendees. And now I can see the new meeting attendees are actually here inside my list as I select each one of these. But notice I just selected this one and it updated the data down here, but not over here. So that's a little something that I need to work out in the code. So as we come back to on select here, the last thing is this check for is the meeting attendees empty or not. I don't need that check inside of this particular Power App. So I can just eliminate that if statement right there and then go back to play the app. And now as I bounce between the two, you can see that the different attendees are indeed listed right there. You'll notice there's also a couple of little things to clean up that are left. And this one actually up here, uh, if we look at it, it, it happens to be that the, the reason is because this attendees image is missing. And then this one over here for email is because it's trying to navigate to a screen that doesn't exist. So just taking these pieces of functionality out of the Power App, like I don't need to send email perhaps, I can just eliminate that. Again, you can see it's trying to navigate to a screen and create collections that I don't need inside of this use case. So I can just delete these things. And now the last two things that I'm missing really just come down to the image up here in the corner, as well as the default image that we can see right here. This image is missing from the Power App. So I'm gonna upload those images now and then everything will be working 100%. To upload those images, I go over to File, Media, and then in the Image section, I click Browse. When I click Browse, it's going to open up to a directory where I've already taken these two images from the other app and I've saved them. To save images from one Power App to the other, start in your Source Power App, like here, go to the Media area, find the image you're looking for, like this one, attendees, for instance, and just right click it and save the image. And that's what I did to save these two images. So now that I've saved them, I can upload them to the Power App here. So there's my default profile pic, and this is my SVG for the attendees logo. And now when I return to the Power App Editor, there they are. And we can see everything is working just right, and if I have an attendee who's not inside of my organization like you see here, it shows the default profile. So I hope this video came in helpful for you. It's a very easy technique. As you can see, you can easily borrow components from the Power Apps sample template and add them into your own Power Apps very easily to make functionality that hardly takes you any time at all. Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've got more coming. Hope you have a good day. I'll see you next time.